Hello, hearties. Look who my hearty guest is tonight, Miss Lillian. Hi there. All the way from, where are you, Lillian? I am in Brooklyn, New York. Yes. Could you, could I, you know? I love it. I see that. Wait a minute. There's all kinds of peoples already here. I mean, we just opened and the stream went straight to 55, which is really amazing in, in less than a minute, seconds. And yes, I will be. I will. I'll be sending their checks out any minute. So <laughs> they're saying hello. And um, I think um where's the one? Oh, now I can't find. Oh, Rona says had met tickets for tonight's game, but would rather be here live for Lillian. And I'm like, yeah, Rona, isn't it raining? Is that what the <laughs> real reason might be? I don't know. Yes. And as a fellow Mets fan, they have lost the first three games of the season. So I'm not too happy with them right now. All right. Oh. And, yeah, I know. I know. You know. It's I'm, it's hard. It's hard being a Mets man. It really is. Brian's here. Hi, Brian. He was a you know a previous guest. Oh, hey, Brian. Yes, and Tanya's here. And um, someone is is it Gabriella? She's from Finland. She, that's my that's my 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 uh, my new BFF. Actually, she is in Helsinki, Finland, and um, we met at the HFR. And oh. she she flew all the way from Finland to go to Vancouver, and I think she wants to move there. You know, she oh. just she loves Vancouver. She 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 raves about Vancouver. Okay, um, lovely. So, but well, she's actually native Italian. Oh wow! She's actually yeah, she's actually Italian, and she's a transplant to Finland. Her husband is Finnish, mm -hmm. but she yeah. is originally. Yeah, I believe she was originally from Milan. Gabriella, correct me if I'm wrong. We have um, I, I'm just our friend Bonsoir, um, our uh, friend Marie. Marie. She's here. Marie, yes, yeah. Marie, Marie, and I met also at HFR, and um, I had to install Google Translate on my phone. So <laughs> that's cool, though. Uh, yeah, but uh, but we we got along and we had a wonderful time. We. Uh, we hung out on set together. We went all, you know, all over the place in uh, in Hope Valley. We had a wonderful time. You're gonna have to talk to us a little bit about that before we get started. I'm just waiting. Oh, we got it bumped up to 75. Um, oh, okay. Just because I have blue lips, I I'm, I can breathe. It's not that. I just wanted to share right away now that I did it. So um, I did, uh, we have a good friend, Tia, who passed away and she made this delicious margarita and she called it the blue shard, which I thought was so adorable. So I was working around with my recipes and I have this brand. It's not sponsored. You can use whatever you want. This is a blueberry tea and I made it. I didn't even have to steep it. I put it in cold and I made a blueberry tea, but there's no sugar in it and has lemon in it. So this is my blue shard margarita iced tea. So it's the blueberry tea, it's lemon, it's frozen blueberries. And then the glass, I have a sweet and like sweet and salty. I did sugar and salt and it's so good. So now my lips and things are blue, but that's okay. Mm. I'm, I'm just having regular tea. So mm -hmm. it's the only time I'm silent. I don't have blue tea. When I'm eating and sleeping, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, loyal forever. Hi, Lillian. This is Shelby's hope. I uh, came from uh, all the entertainment yeah. you and Roxanne are going to provide. Good Lord. Now that's something to live up to. All yeah, right. Shelby is uh, very active on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, which yeah, you are very active on Twitter. Yeah. What is, um, tell me what your, um, tag is so people can, um, follow you. It's at what on, on Twitter. It's my okay. name. L Lillian has Okay. It, it, I'm, I'm, it's just uh, actually, I think, I think it's my it's last name first. I think it's my last. First. Yeah, I think it's my last name and then my first yep. name. I put be, it in the ad. Okay, yeah. thank you. That is, if anyone wants to follow you on Twitter. So, tell us how you became a Hardy. I actually uh, became a Hardy quite by accident. I had never really heard of the show. Um, I was not really uh, a fan of serialized. Mm -hmm. um, continuing stories. Like I watch series, you know, mm -hmm. Law, Law and Order or NCIS, but mm -hmm. all those episodes had a beginning, a middle and an end. And yeah. um, so back in 2018, uh, mm -hmm. Christmas, I just happened to be um, looking through the channels and I stumbled across 
One Calls the Heart, A Christmas Blessing. And uh, I had never heard of the show. Um, or maybe I heard of it, but I really didn't pay attention. Mm-hmm. So I said, all right, you know, I'll watch this. So I started to watch it and I'm like, oh, isn't this sweet? She's pregnant. And all of a sudden I'm like, where's her husband? You know, I had no idea. I didn't know who Jack was. I didn't know anything about the show. So I looked it up and I went, oh, oh, he died. But that also became apparent as you continued to watch the episode. Um, and then there was that wonderful scene where, she, where Abigail says, what's wrong? And she says, I haven't even been able to finish the nursery. Uh, Jack and I were going to do it together and I, I can't do it without him. And, and I mean, I, I didn't know this woman from a hole in the wall and I started crying and, and mm-hmm. I'm like, Okay, this is this is this is pathetic. Uh, that's pathetic, right? I should. Why am I? No, crying? I'm laughing about the hole in the wall. Is, right? I don't know her from a hole in the wall. So, and then of course the following scene is knock knock on the door. She goes to the door, and there's Florence and Molly and Abigail and Rosemary, and uh, that was my first introduction to Rosemary. And I said that is the funniest person I think I've ever met, because she comes in and completely takes charge, and she says. You have your choice of wallpaper, but this is the best one, you know. And how about this curtain? You know, <laughs> you know. But this is the best one, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they and and it was just a wonderful thing. And then um and then further, obviously, then they go off to Benson Hills to get the roast, and then you know what's going to happen. Salami, and then <laughs> the Christmas salami, and um, and as they come back, of course, Elizabeth goes into labor, and the birth of baby Jack was was positively nativity-like, okay? I mean, seriously. You got the three women finding shelter in the cabin and then you got the three guys on horseback with the lanterns searching for them. And I'm going, I'm waiting for like a biblical, you know, like the star of David to like, you know, appear in the sky. But I liked it. And I said, this is really interesting. Um, And then I heard that the new season was gonna start in a couple of months or two and a half months or whatever it was. And, um, and I said, you know, you know, maybe I'll give this a shot. So I, I said, but I think I should kind of like refresh my, like figure out what happened before. So I literally ordered seasons one to five on the on DVD, and I binge watched the all seasons, all seasons one through five, in like two weeks, maybe. I think I watched five seasons, maybe two and a half weeks. Wow. Um. And yeah, I have a que- I have a question. Yes. Um, I, I, those people who have watched from the beginning, um, in season four, which actually is probably my favorite season, I think. I love season four. Um, when Jack tells Elizabeth he's he's leaving. Um, did any? Did, did any of you know, or was there any inkling that he was leaving the show, that that Dan was leaving? I mean, he did come back for those first few episodes of episode of season five. Um, and then, of course, they got married. They lived in the row house for about 15 hours, and then he left again. And then he never came back. Uh, until until we find out that he died. Did was there any preparation for the for the viewers that that's how it was going to end? I mean, was there rumors I, that he was leaving or? I heard, I didn't know and in, in four, but when season five rolled around, I had heard from, I wasn't like crazy with social media. I didn't know until season five came on. And I think I saw it like, I don't know, maybe on Google and I it came up. Okay. Or maybe in YouTube. And I was like, why? Why? And you know how those things pop up in YouTube. And I did a little research. So yeah. I knew it was coming. Oh, okay. Okay. I, knew I, mean, clear, I mean, you know, clearly it wasn't a surprise to me since I, I, I knew baby Jack was born and he had no father, that there was no father. But having not watched season one to five live, um, you know, I, I don't know with the... Uh, Oh, okay. I'm seeing Brian. Brian said, Dan. Dan first told Brian Bird he wanted to leave in season three. He missed oh. episode four and five. So what re- that, but what happened was 
he had a contract that he had to hold. And that's how everybody said, oh, their five-year contract's coming up. Chris and, and all of them, their five-year, there's no five-year contract for everybody. That's not right. how it worked. But for whatever was going on with Dan, he still had to, you know, map out his I know. contract. Right. So that is why he, um, they had him stay, but you saw that he was gone a lot. He was, yeah, he was gone a lot. Yeah. I mean, you know, he was, he was in there for, you know, for the first half, let's say, of mm -hmm. season four. And mm -hmm. then he was gone. I mean, uh, you know, uh, when um, after Doug died, he, you know, he had this this you know pang of conscience mm -hmm. of saying, "I have to, you know, fulfill yeah. my de my destiny. My destiny is to serve my country." And um, you know, surprisingly, though, Elizabeth said, "I'll go with you." Yeah, I know. And he said, "No, you you need to stay here." Yeah, uh, but but she offered. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, isn't that ironic? Right? Isn't that ironic? Yes. You want um, you want to know what else? While you're sitting there saying that, uh, let me let's read this, and I'll tell you. It's someone else telling you what. Um, Kathy says, "Nope, didn't have a clue. Complete chalk. Elizabeth was in her nightgown, and then he disappeared." Um, Equa says, um, "It was apparent that DL was leaving when he was he was um seen. He wasn't seen much. Yeah, wasn't seen and much. Yeah. This is interesting because this is a different." take chris said i had a suspicion because the way the cast members were listed yeah well i, I always thought that uh dan lissing was listed last right before abigail right before Lori lachlan when they do the and right the and right they would do they, you know, also with, and and also right they would start yeah. out erin craco and then it would be like pascal tavern mm -hmm. et cetera et cetera and then it would be with dan list with daniel lissing yeah and Lori lachlan Right. And that's right. that's how that's how the credits would go. So that yeah. you have the first, which is the top, and mm -hmm. the last, which is also the top. Yeah. So Lori Lachlan was also, even though she's listed last, she's still the top. Yeah. So being last is not a bad thing. No. It's about, because and, being last, if it has a with and an also. With, that, right, yeah. right. That yeah. yeah, that is a yeah, that's a huge yeah. thing. Anyway. And Nikki was saying Daniel had to let uh, Brian Bird know in season three that he wanted out and told them he was off to the Northern Territories, lots in four and less than five. Right. Less than him leaving town. Yes, yes, yes. On their honeymoon, right. Yep, yep. Okay. So some, most people didn't know, but that's only because social media didn't attach on to everything like it, it does now. And we, we look right. at every little thing. There's a good and a, and a bad about that. I know. Right, right, right. You no. Know. So okay. you think season four was your favorite? I, you know, I have several favorites. I mean, if someone said, I would say it would be a toss up between four, seven and nine. Okay. Um, but if I take all like one to nine, um, I I'm, would disregard 10. I'd say That's one fine. to nine. Okay. Um, then I would say probably four, and I, and but I, I loved season season nine. I, it was beautiful, but season four I loved. You know why it? I wrote down a couple of things. Okay. Season four introduced so many characters for the first time. Um, it introduced Ray Wyatt. Yeah. It in, it introduced Philip and Shane Cantrell. Yes. Um, it introduced Carson Shepard. I know. I love that. It introduced A.J. Forster. Mm -hmm. And then there were a few others. Uh, it introduced the, the adorable Murphy McBride, who worked for Lee and had the, and had, and he was sweet on Katie Yost. And there was that scene in the middle of the street. And of course, <laughs> Rosemary, the matchmaker, had to play ventriloquist with her poor Murphy. And she stands behind him and grabs his arm. And she, and, and she goes, Katie, come here. Murphy has something to say to you, right? And and Mur and Murphy comes down and and she goes with Murphy's hand. She goes, "Okay, oh my goodness, my love for you." And then she kicks him in the back of the knee, which forces him down on his knees. Would you please go on a picnic with me tomorrow? You know, like that. And he didn't say a word. Rosemary was saying it. That was hilarious. Um, we met Doug Burke, obviously the Mountie Jack's Mountie friend, and we also met young Cyrus, the little boy with the knee brace. And then they had the whole thing with the baseball game. Yes, I love that. And I thought that was fabulous. I loved season four. I loved it, loved it, loved it. I also thought there were a, a couple of very, very funny Lee and Rosemary 
moments, and I loved those early seasons of Lee and Rosemary. There was the Honey Bunny and Squidget. Um, and then there was Lee bought a car. And Lee buys the car and Rosemary says she has to get to Benson Hills to get whatever fabric yes, she needs to yes, get. Yes, yes. And Lee says, but I can't, I can't teach you right now. I can't take you right now. And she says, well, how do you know how to, you know, what do you need to know? You know, you step on the gas and you turn the wheel and you go. And he's like, no, there are three pedals. And Carson walks by and says, hey, how many horses under the hood? And Rosemary goes, oh, Carson, how silly. You know, like it was, it was funny. But then of course, she does take Lee's car and then she rushes into Abigail's cafe and she says to Abigail and Elizabeth, when did they move the mercantile into the middle of the street? <laughs> she says, what are you talking about? She says, they really should make those, those streets wider. She says, I almost hit the mercantile on a wagon and so-and-so's chickens. And she says, you took Lee's car without this permit? And she goes, <laughs> Well, you know, he was told me uh, he was going to teach me how to drive. And then Lee comes in and Rosemary goes, ooh. <laughs> and she gets up and she turns around and she says to him, before you say anything, it's not my fault. And he says, right, the car made you do it. And then she gets huffy and she says, don't you take that tone with me, Lee Coulter. You take that back. He says, no. She says, you are not the boss of me. He says, well, maybe I should be. And then she announces, and then she announces she's going to go and stay with Elizabeth. And Elizabeth goes, you are? And she goes, yes, I am. Like that. Without <laughs> a, a doubt, I roared laughing. It's and a good course, scene. Right? But the next scene, Elizabeth and Rosemary are in her row house. And Elizabeth basically tells her off. Mm -hmm. And she says, you are so lucky to have a man like Lee who loves you. And she says, wait, are you taking his side? Elizabeth says it's the only side I could possibly take. Yes, you're wrong, Rosemary. And then she says, you know, sometimes you can be a big pain in the side, mm -hmm. right? Instead of, you know, rear end, whatever. Um, yeah. I loved that. I love that. Um, that's so that's a great scene as, as well as episode. So wonderful. That was a, yeah. I loved that episode. I loved pretty much all of season four. I Wait, mean, before you go, hold on. I want to, I want to yeah. share something Brian has. Brian says, um, Robin was the showrunner for seasons three and four. And I thought she was excellent and really showcased Elizabeth in the classroom. Brian. Yes. 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 Ab absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Christina was saying, I actually liked Elizabeth when she was single and not looking for love. Okay. Okay. All right. And then well, you're I, saying I, I, right yeah. now. Yeah. All right. Um, go, ahead. go ahead. It's your anyway, turn. But uh, yeah. I, but again, in season four, Jack gets the medal, right? Mm -hmm. Jack gets the medal. And he gets the medal for, let me write, I wrote it down. It's this important. Uh, for capturing the Jake Garrison gang, for rescuing the workers after the flood, and for uh, capturing the Tolliver gang. Yeah. That's a lot of Mountie stuff. Yes. He got a great commendation for that. Um, and, and when I compare it to um, another medal, uh, which, um, never mind. <laughs> yes, you can mention it. Which Nathan got for what? For the case for cops. For, 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 really for, dis for disarming an old man in 32 seconds. Or less than 32 seconds. Probably three seconds. You know, the, the guy went like this and Nathan took the gun and went, ha ha, you know, so, um, but I, I, I want, it's, you know, that, oh. the difference in the style of Mountie is, yeah, is, is like, like you that. want, you want Nathan to get to be a Mountie. I want Nathan to be a Mountie. Yes. I want him to be, he's a Mountie. I want him to be a Mountie. Do you remember the one season all he did was leave and come back and leave and come back? And even one point, Kevin makes the joke, and I don't know if he ad libbed or if it was really in there. He's like, Don't they, what do they lose all their keys? Like they, they, you know, people right. keep escaping. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, um, and then of course, season four was also take a walk with me. <gasps> Mm. And Jack, I mean, you want to talk about a grand gesture. Jack cleaned out 
all the candles in the mercantile. All right, I was on that set, okay? And I know how far a walk it is from Abigail's Cafe to the school. Okay? I now I realize that for purposes of filming, they didn't, they didn't put yeah. candles on the entire walk. Yeah, yeah. But even just the, around where the school was, you saw, I mean, on the lawn, there was hundreds and hundreds of candles. And then, of course, he says, I don't know if I should ask you because it may not be fair asking you to wait. And she says, I would wait a lifetime for you. And then he proposes. And it's beautiful. And then he leaves. <laughs> it's just like, oh, God. <laughs> um, but then, but then, one of my favorite scenes is the the next evening in the school where they're having the little recital mm -hmm. and uh, poor Timmy is he's too nervous he he doesn't want to play he says she promised to sing with me and and Elizabeth comes in and says and I never break a promise I think Erin Krako has one of the most beautiful voices I think she I I would describe her as having perfect pitch she does she she has a lovely voice and when she sang Danny Boy, I just because <laughs> that was one of my mom's favorite songs too. Uh -huh. My mother was my mother was Irish. You can't tell by my last name, but my mother was her name was Lillian Margaret Mary. Okay, that was my mom's name, Margaret Mary. <laughs> yeah, uh, she was very Irish, and um, Irish too. she loved that song, Danny Boy. She loved it. So I just started crying. I just started, and the same thing in in. Um, season eight, when Aaron sang Tura Lura Lura to Little Jack. My mother sang that song to me and my sisters when we were little. Aww. I mean, uh, you know, my mother couldn't sing like Aaron, but but she tried. That's cute. That's sweet. Yeah. Rona says she sang it live and Brian. Is yeah, saying, she did. Yeah, and this is true, Brian. Part of the problem the last couple seasons is the size of the ensemble cast doesn't allow time for the sustained storylines. You are correct. You are yes. correct, Brian. Yes. Yes, you are, Brian. So um, I think you have something that you said that I thought was fun that I loved about season five, what came out of five that you just loved. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, season five ended very sadly. Yes. But in the season five Christmas episode, the Hardy universe was introduced to the infamous wig, the season five wig, mm -hmm. uh, which was without a doubt the worst wig ever created for any character on fictional TV. And, well, I know you had, I know you and Kathy had the wig as a guest one week. We did. Um, yes, you did. And that wig was awful. It was terrible. And she wore it all through season five. She wore it the entire season. She just wore it in the Christmas episode and they fixed it up for the season. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when, I mean, the, the, the people that, that, that run When Calls the Heart, they have wonderful hair and makeup people. They have Barbara Gregosova, who is probably one of the finest costume designers in creation. And yet they have this awful, awful, horrible wig. And um, I, I will never get over that. Every time I watch season five, it's a sad scene, and all I do is start laughing. It's just, oh. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. I know. Yeah, it's I know. Um, pathetic. It's very bad. Loyal Forever saying, Lillian, you need to have your own podcast, girl. Love hearing about all your favorites. And Thank so you. while we're there. Thank you, Shelby. Why we're there, do you have a favorite podcast? Oh, gee, I don't know. Which one would it be? I don't know. You. <laughs> hmm. Thank um, you. I know you yeah, really no. have another one that you love. I, know. I do. Well, I, it, it doesn't exist anymore. But obviously, one, one of my other favorite podcasts was the Luca Beth Lounge. Um, the, I, a shout out to Div and Jillian um, and uh, Linda, um, who did that and poured their heart and soul into that podcast and were absolutely crushed in uh, mm -hmm. in season 10. And it um, it's a shame, really. Um, very, very sad. I think but, though, that even though they don't have new episodes, 
I think that everything that they have is, you know, it's evergreen. So people could go back and watch it. So yeah, you can go back and watch it. Yeah. But if anyone I mean, is new or hasn't yeah. seen or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of not the same though. Once, you know. Yes. Uh, but anyway. Um, what, but yeah. What about, um, what about a fan fiction? Cause I know you read some fan fiction, don't you? Um, well, I like Nikki the, who you had on last week. She has a mm -hmm. wonderful, uh, fan fiction that I've been reading called tides of change. Mm -hmm. it's, gonna, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's really good. Um, and Teresa, uh, tree. Oh, yes. Tree is, has been writing a wonderful fan fiction. Now see Nikki, her fan fiction continues the story of Lucas and Elizabeth, but Tree has um, veered from that, and she has created a new character, yeah. totally fictional. She she doesn't exist. She only exists in in Teresa's imagination, um, and it is it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so I, um, keep going. Don't lose your train of thought. Yeah, and uh, Tanya has um, a very nice fan fiction. I, for the life of me, I can't remember the name of it. Are they but the she has, she has a, uh, they're probably on the Lucas and uh, Lucas uh, fan fiction Facebook okay. page. Oh, Tanya. Um, Tanya's here. Ta Tanya. Yeah, Tanya. 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 Comments. Um, it, the it's title. wonderful. And the, uh, she, yeah, maybe Tanya can tell me the title. I've been reading that. And she has created this wonderful character who is a college professor. Mm -hmm. um for lucas and uh it's a it's a it's a such a sweet sweet story beautiful sweet story um i'm sure there are a few others that i that yeah. i read but uh those are three that right off the top of my head okay. that i can that i can think of anya said it's called the dreams we share i'll cast it up ah. in one minute brian has a question lillian how do you feel about the ladies corset the wig and the corset seem to be gone in season 11 at least for Elizabeth, I mean, um, I, I don't know about Rosemary, but they really little by little have been getting rid of all of that. How do you feel? Um, well, I think, uh, you know, we're into the 1920s mm. and I think the corsets probably should be a thing of the past. Um, I, can't, I, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Mm. I'm not sure I like Elizabeth's new look. Um, I'm not a... She... <sighs> Don't take this the wrong way, Brian. I think she looks rather matronly. Mm. Okay, with the with the with the the the, the, the like the, the clothing. Yeah, is um right. It's um yeah. I you know Where, I mean I'll Fiona, give it a shot. Let me know. Yeah. Fiona has a shorter, spicier haircut, but she's also right. got doodads and she's got different clothes. Of course, and, and she already had shorter skirts. Yeah. What I'm talking about is like the blouses that they have mm -hmm. Elizabeth wearing, you know, with these big wide collars and these yeah. puffy sleeves. And I'm thinking, that's not very attractive. She looked much more attractive in season 10. Um, and, uh, you know, I know that there is a, a uh, scene where they have a surprise party for uh, Nathan yes. in, Lucas's, in Lucas's saloon, that den of iniquity. Um, and, uh, yes. she's dressed up in the same dress that she's worn before, only they've shortened the hem yes. and her hair, lo her hair looks, it does look better. I mean, they have yes. it like, you know, behind one ear and it does look better. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah. when they said they were preparing like a surprise party, I thought it was a welcome home, Lucas. <laughs> Silly me. Yeah. Um, no, it's his birthday. I know. It's Nathan's birthday. Um, MDM is saying old school marm. <laughs> oh, well, I, you know, I just thought she, she just, it just wasn't like the initial, when she first walks into the saloon and she goes, huh, you know, um, and that could have been just because Rosemary just cut it and butchered it a little bit and they had to fix it up. But by the way, why didn't Fiona cut her hair? Where is Fiona? I don't Can someone. Know. Can someone please tell me where is Fiona? I don't okay, know. She, she's the hairdresser. Hello. <laughs> I don't um, know. So anyway, what can I say? I don't know. Um, jo Jonas St. Rosemary appears to still have a beautiful wardrobe. The corset and her lovely long hair in her um, 
in her cast. Yes, yes. She, does. she does. Yeah. Rose, I think Rosemary is still wearing a corset. Um, they, they asked in an interview, they asked Aaron, Deirdre asked Aaron why she has a new look, a new haircut. And she said, and I never thought of this. Like my hair, I wouldn't be cutting off my hair or changing my hair for anybody. She said, oh, it's the breakup haircut. A breakup. She called it a breakup haircut. In her Which interview. Is like, I know yeah. she did. I heard. I heard that. Yeah. I was Which, like, ser I was like, seriously, Erin, did you really have to say that? You know. Um, yeah. What can I say? That's okay. Um, so, it's all right. I mean, she can do what she wants. Now, let's talk about, um, so who's a favorite character? <laughs> I'll give you two guesses. All right. Um, well, my I have several. Okay, but yeah. my number one favorite character is surprise, surprise, Lucas. Yeah, I love Lucas Bouchard. I think that man is generous to a fault. Um, he would give give you the shirt off his back. He saved the oil company and he paid the oil workers out of his own pocket. Yeah. Right. And then when, when Elizabeth confronted him, because of course she was very protective of Henry and he said, Elizabeth, you don't understand, you know, and, and then, cause she was jumping to conclusions. And then she says, I'm so sorry. I, I should have given you the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he's just, I, I, I can't say enough good things about this man. I love okay. the character. He's romantic. He he's, is absolutely he's educated. romantic. He's highly educated. I mean, they have, her. this is why I, I like they, they, Elizabeth and Lucas were so well matched. They were both highly educated, very well read, very well traveled. They've both traveled the world already. Now they both want to settle down in a small town. Mm -hmm. So when they say, when they say, well, Lucas really always wanted to leave. Well, no, he didn't. Um, but this is a man who would give up his happiness and maybe his own personal safety to save the town that he loves so dearly, also to save it for the woman who loves it so much, so she can stay there and raise her son. Yeah, I love how they wrote town. that though. They, they, that, that's, I love that, that he's a, he's a good man. He's he a good... is such a good man. Yeah. Um, I saw that the same, late this afternoon, I saw a very brief uh, little uh, trailer, spoiler trailer mm -hmm. um, from episode one where Lee is on the phone with Edwin and Elizabeth runs in and Nathan and Bill are standing there and Edwin tells him that Lucas has been shot and he's in surgery and Elizabeth is all upset. And I'm like, I, you know, I mean, it's. They released uh, that for us to see that for uh, the viewers to see. So we know what was happening because I think they want, usually there's a time hop. There isn't a time hop here. It well, looks, there, there, there is. I think, I, I think there is a, a huge time hop. I think what a lot of, I, this is my personal opinion. I think a lot of episode one will be a flashback or, or a significant portion of episode one is going to be a, a flashback. Because, I mean, the next scene we see is Goldie's walking. Goldie was just baptized four months right. ago. How is Goldie yes. walking already? All right, that, 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 that kid, right. that kid is a miracle kid. No. Because that do, kid is walking. They do go forward. She said that. But I think in the beginning or episode one, we're going to, I don't know, maybe it is a flashback, but um, Tanya says, I can't wait until E's hair is hacked off. It will make it easier to watch her as another character, Lizzie and season 11. That's true. She oh, will. Yeah. She will. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's possible. Yeah. Like, um, you know, go ahead. I mean, so go I, back to what I you're know. saying. Go ahead. I, yeah. I mean, lovely. Uh, so she, so she, she comes in and she's all upset. Is he okay? Is she okay? And she grabs the phone. And then she says, I have to go to Capital City. And I'm thinking, why? Why do you have to go to Capital City? Why would you insert yourself back into this man's life that you forced to get on that train to go save your precious town? And now you're upset that he might get hurt, Mr. Safe? You know? Um, you know what I, I'm saying? I apologize for getting a little heated there. No, it's fine. But it's I mean, about you. But it's, 
but it's yeah but that's me i can't help myself that's um, right. this is about you know, you. So, and then and then she walks out and what happens nathan grabs her arm as she's walking out the door to go to capital city to be with lucas and he took he looks at her and he says he says i want to like oh god really are you serious I know. Be safe. I know. Be oh gosh. Be safe. I won't even, I won't even get and, into all of that. And another and another podcast group that will remain unnamed says that be safe equals I love you. Okay. Uh, you know who I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll tell you later. I know. <laughs> no, I know, but I think that's funny. Okay, be safe. Now, and of course, that's his I love you until he can actually say the words I love you. But he's already said them. So anyway. Right, he um, said them back in season eight. Now, let's talk about your, um, like you said, you have more than one favorite character. Who else besides? I do. Um, I love, Rose, I love, well, I love Rose Mary and Lee. I think they are the Lucy and Ricky of Hope Valley. They are, they are, they're wonderful together. They have such great lines. Um, they have such great scenes. Some of them are hilarious. I mean, how about in, um, uh, I guess it, was it season nine? When, when, no. Season, what was, um, when Rosemary gets the phone. <laughs> when that's Rose, season Rose eight. Yeah. Oh, oh eight. That's, season eight, right? Season eight. No, 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 that's Rosemary. nine. It's nine. It's that's, nine. That's, yeah. it's, it is season nine, right? So Rosemary gets the phone. And and she doesn't tell Lee, and they're in the house, and Lee's reading the paper, and it goes like this, and then and then you hear ring ring, and he goes, and he says, "What's happening?" And Rosemary's like, "Oh, I didn't hear anything." <laughs> and then he goes behind the pillow, and he goes, "Rosemary, you know, you got the, you got this, you got this this phone," and and uh, and she says, "Well, you said we could have it." He says, "I thought I said we'd think about it," and she goes, "Well, we thought about it, and here and see, and there it is." And then she does this whole big thing about, well, what if um, something happens with a little baby Jack and Elizabeth has to call for a doctor? Or what if there's a plague? You know? <laughs> and Lee looks at her and says, a plague, you know. Um, and then there that are all those season wonderful- Season six, Rona says. Oh, that yeah. was season six. It that is. Because... Hilarious. That was hilarious. Yes. And um, I loved it there too. Are, but there were also some very touching scenes yeah. between them. Okay, you know, the, the scenes where she she tells Lee that she doesn't think she can give him a child, right? I mean, and, and that was a couple of seasons back and um, and she says, I just don't think, and he says, you, you don't know that. It could just as easily be me. Yeah. So he, he doesn't allow her to carry that burden by himself. Yep. yep. And then when they do finally find out they're pregnant, it is just that scene where he runs out into the street, we're having a baby, and he just runs into town barefoot. That was wonderful. Um, I love Lee and Rosemary. Um, one of my favorite characters is Bill Avery. I think Jack Wagner has got to be, without a doubt, one of the funniest people on TV. He, he's, he's so, so, so sarcastic. Um, yeah, just to give you a for instance, back in season four, in the Christmas episode when Sam Bailey, the peddler, he, he's looking to get food for his dog. So he goes through the trash outside of the cafe and he pulls a scone out, he puts it in his hat, but he inadvertently knocks over the trash can. Mm -hmm. And of course, Bill opens the door immediately like, what are you doing? You know? and, uh, and he says, well, I'm sorry, I wanted to find something for my dog, but I'm putting everything back, everything's fine. And he goes, he goes, your dog likes scones, you know? And he looks at him and he goes, do I know you? And Sam looks at him and says, could be. Do you play golf? I just burst out laughing because everybody knows that Jack Wagner is an yeah. avid yeah. and very good pro-am yes. golfer. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I just thought that line was hilarious. I love Bill Avery. And then uh, last but not least, I would say I love the Canfields. I love Minnie. I love Joseph. I love the kids. Um, but Minnie and her very soft yes. voice, her way about it. Minnie, Minnie and Joseph were like pretty much the only like people who supported Lucas back in season 10. They were the only, right? Everyone was kind of like, oh, go ahead, goodbye. You know, 
Um, but many be praying for you, you know. I know. Um, I love them. Um, I, I'm is, sure there were others, you know, but. Uh, is there a rel you know, No, I like this. I, is there yeah. a relationship that you like, like through the years, um, a friendship or, you know, on screen partners of some sort that you liked? Well, obviously, I loved the Lucas and Elizabeth courtship, um, which basically took place over the better part of almost four seasons. Yes. Um, you know, like a, a teeny tiny bit in season six, maybe the final episode. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a little bit of season, obviously season seven. You had the union, one of the, the union city date. You had if this were a date. Um, most of season eight, all of season nine, and the first half of season ten. Um, and, you know, so, you know, pardon me if, if, if I was a little surprised when it didn't happen. <laughs> I know we all, um, I, was I, I, you know, I, you know, another, another storyline obviously was, uh, Henry Gowan. Mm. Um, although I think Henry's redemption arc was dragged out, maybe just Intense. a little Right, intense. Yes. I, I, to me, Henry's redemption arc was complete mm -hmm. when he hit when he hit his knees in the jail in yes. season nine yes. with with Joseph, and yes. he said, "I don't know how to pray. Would you teach me?" And yes. Joseph said, "It would be my honor." And they got down on their knees together. To me, that was the end of Henry's redemption arc, but they dragged it into season ten. Maybe because they wanted to introduce, reintroduce the character of Rosaline. I don't know. But I have um, an idea about that. Like they could have absolutely still did it. And it could have been more about Rosaline accepting her and Henry trying, you know, he could have been like helping her along the way or, or right. having a conversation with, um, with uh, the, her mother. Like, I mean, it just, I know it was weird how it was written. Yeah, I get it. I agree. Yeah. I just, you know, I, I, I you know, okay. I just, I liked it. But I loved it. I thought it was beautiful. I, lo I loved, I loved Henry's redemption. Arc. I mean, so I. from after I had gone back and watched from season one and realized that in season one, Henry Gowan was a very evil man. Yeah. He was, he was selfish. He was, mm -hmm. you know, he was just not a nice man. And mm -hmm. then you fast forward turned into a much more sympathetic yeah. figure. Yeah. And you realize that this man has been hurting mm -hmm. for a long time. And, uh, and he has tried to make it right. And I think blowing up the mine was his, he blew it, mea, it was kind of like his mea culpa. Yep. And, and, um, and then finding he was now in legal trouble because of that. But he would get through it, and that was his redemption. And then they carried it through to season yeah. ten. But but of course, in the beginning of season ten, we find that Lucas outwits Jerome Smith. Yeah, and saved. Oh, there's another thing I like about Lucas. He saved his friend. He used his ability to bluff. Mm -hmm. His his you know like he was like a little maybe a tiny bit devious, but just did it for the purposes of helping a friend yeah yeah and he I, and he even and he even said to elizabeth later in the day he says and this is when they were doing that cake tasting right mm -hmm. and he said uh, and he says i hope you she and he says i hope you know you know that uh, henry gowan is free and she goes oh lucas how did you do that he goes oh i hope you don't mind but i use a little a few of my poker skills and she says actually i love you for it i know, I know. maybe not maybe not I don't know. Watch <laughs> me. Danny is I saying, hi, all. I have not participated in the chats for so long. Lillian, I was so disappointed with the breakup. Chris McNally's ET interview was encouraging um, uh, for his arc with Lucas. So she is. That's all true. Playing. That's true. I mean, Chris, I, I, I watched the three, the three ET interviews. Mm -hmm. of Aaron, I mean, Kevin's um, and then uh, Chris's and then Aaron's, right? And like Kevin said, where, I mean, um, um, Aaron just, you know, just happened to stop by. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, that had to be planned. I mean, that was obviously planned. I mean, that was not, that was not, that was not just, oh, 
long is Kevin doing an interview? I think I'll drop one. No, that was obvious. That had to be planned. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and then I watched Chris's. And to me, and obviously I looked through it with, with, a, with, a, with a bit of a bias. Okay. Yeah. I admit it. Um, but Chris genuinely sad for the fans. Yeah, who were who were upset. Mm -hmm. um, neither Kevin or Aaron were genuinely upset. They they said we're so sorry, but we're happy to give back to the Kevin fans. I'm sorry. Did you say Kevin fans or did you mean Nathan fans? I'm not sure if that was a Freudian slip on Aaron's part. Um, but in any case, uh, when Chris said. I was very, because like when Deirdre said, like, so as Chris, are you happy? And he said, no. He said, I, you know, actually, I'm kidding. He said, but, he said, I did say to them, I thought we, we all talked about this, that we weren't going to do this again. And he even said that in his Heart to Hardy's interview, that he was very surprised that they had already fractured the fan base once, and why would they do it again? And I, I have the same question. You know, the, the fan base was fractured back in season eight. It was just starting to heal. In season nine, we had a potential beautiful romance between Nathan and Mesu, which we even had a hashtag, Nathan. And people were very happy about it. Even very good friends of mine who are big Nathan fans, they were, they were you know, they were on board. I mean, and I, and I won't name any names because I, I don't want to say anything. But these are people, they had their own page. They had their own Facebook page, Nathan. And, um, and I was on board with that. I was like, I think she's perfect. She rode into town dressed as a man. She's spunky. She's great. She would be a I perfect foil. She would be a perfect foil. In season 10, Mesu has been reduced to gathering mud for face masks. What they do to me, what they do to her character. In they forgot. 10. They forgot that she was part of their council and they forgot that she was a pharmacist. They had her in the very beginning there a little right. bit. One other time, a little bit working with um, uh, Faith. But there was so much going on that her character was more about the girls laughing and, and it was more about romance. And, and it was. Right. And she was plain spoken. That's what she said. That's what she said. Yeah. More than once. But in that episode, she was all he, he, who, who. And, and I thought, oh, so my God, there's a totally a turnaround. I, I call it, I call this uh, uh, one, one through nine is when calls the heart part one. Ten right. one is when calls the heart part two. Part and two, not, right. Not two point when people say two point. So no. well, they say, oh, but it's really zero. But when they say that, what that means is new and improved. And I don't no. find that it's new and improved. No, I just find that it's not. different. It's different. It's part yeah. two. Yeah. It's part two. It's part two. I'm part two. Um, now, I, I wanted to ask a question about um, Bill. What? How did you feel about Bill's relationship with Madeline? Would you like to see I, her back? Um, I think since... She has kind of, I, I want to say she kind of semi-redeemed herself by not signing the deed and returning it to Bill. Mm -hmm. um, I think she has an opportunity to make it up to him. Mm -hmm. um, what, I, what I think of, what, of Bill's character during season 10 was, seriously, Bill, this is a man who doesn't trust anybody. Anybody. Since I met him in whatever season he came in. When did he come in? Season three, maybe? This man doesn't trust no. anybody. And mm -hmm. yet he sold a woman that he did not even know that well, a parcel of land, because he was smitten. He wasn't thinking with this mind. Part the... Right? Part he two. was thinking with... He was Lee, he was thinking with another body part, but certainly not this. So, um, so Bill's Bill was totally out of character at season ten, yes. as were as were a lot of characters. And in, in just, but that's my opinion. A lot of people think, a lot of pe a lot of my friends who who liked season ten 
would believe that no, 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 they're returning to the way it should be. Yeah. But I, but, but to me, it's like, yeah, but no one really was acting like themselves. I mean, like, Fiona, like even Fiona, what, what did Fiona do in season 10 other than create an antenna? She was, she, she did nothing. She was a hood ornament. She was nothing. Yeah. Um, which is a shame. I know. I love I her know. character too. She's spicy. There's I a love Fiona. I love yes. Fiona. A couple of things we need to address. One, I wonder if um, this has affected Chris's place on the call sheet. I'm going to address that in a minute. But Bill was in season one, but not right away did we see him. Bill okay. came later. Remember, he came and we weren't quite sure who he was. And he caught the eye of... Um, of Abigail, and then right, we find okay. out that he, at well, first they tried to make it like he was shady, but he was undercover, and- Oh, he, he was, he was yeah. gonna investigate the mind yes. thing. Yes. Right, and right, then right, right, right. We finally get to trust him, then we see the, the picture, and we find out he was married, and there was that whole big, yeah. But I loved how even though they weren't together, those two, Abigail and and um, Bill, had great chemistry. Even though they weren't together, how them. they needled each other and they they would they fight, were great. You know, oh God! And they oh I mean put in, them in each other's place. Like put they were great. Yeah, I so miss Abigail. I I, know. I I I truly miss Abigail. Um, I you know I know that it there is pre pretty much no chance that she will ever come back. Um, you know. It, it's a shame because she was really good. She was. She was. She, she was, was really good. Um, in fact, like when I started watching, like in season six, mm -hmm. okay, like I watched the, the the Christmas episode. That was my introduction, mm -hmm. and then my first my first episodic season was season six. Okay. The, the first the first three episodes aired in February the end of February and early March. Right. Episode four did not air until May. Mm-hmm. Because the entire season yeah. six had to be re not so much reshot. Maybe yes. a couple of scenes had to be reshot, yes. but it had to be re-edited. Yes. And then it was then reduced from 10, 10 episodes to nine episodes because yes. two okay. episodes had to be combined yep. Yep. because they had to cut Lori Lachlan out of so many scenes. Yes. And so kind of why season six may have looked a tiny bit choppy from time yeah. to time was yeah. because of editing, um, which is kind of a shame. I um, loved I loved her character too. And she's a yeah. phenomenal actress. She's so she's like Aaron. They're very good. You know that they're not right. acting. And I can't say that for all of the um not the main cast but the people that come on as guests they're right. not always seamless like they because they're sharing a scene with an actor that is really good at what they do it takes it jars mm -hmm. and um but but that's okay everybody you know is trying to do their thing yeah um before we move on, it says, this is Kathy. I wanted to address this. I wonder if if um, this has affected Chris's place on the call sheet. Pretty crappy. If so, we need to be fair to everyone. Let's talk about fairness here. So you're probably not going to, you're going to be surprised probably what I'm going to say. I find that kind of, and Kathy, I'm not picking on you, but this is not the first time I've seen this. I find that kind of a comment ironic because that is exactly what people who are, really loving Kevin thought. And if you go and you look, you will see that Chris had higher billing than Kevin for every single um, episode. I think, I think maybe there was the one, but most of the time he had, but that's because his storyline was more prominent and for in, in the forefront that top billing usually is between Aaron, um, Jack and, um, uh, Pascal. Pascal. Those three usually are up there. Um, but it's whatever the storyline is, and it sh it changes and it moves. And that's how it goes. Now, was it always that he had to, like a higher billing? No. It has to do with your storyline. It's not that you're downgraded. And that, that to me is annoying when people are like, hey, they're doing him wrong and all that. That's embarrassing for Chris. Like that annoys me. 
Chris doesn't think that nor believe that. As a matter of fact, he's, he's there telling you how he's excited for the next season, but people don't want to hear it. And I feel like that kind of is a detriment. It's not helpful. So right. we need to get off that train, okay, and pay attention to, to no, everybody's space changes or on the list changes. Um, Grammy Rose, I don't know what they're, oh, they're talking to each other, which is good. Um, yeah, hello, hello. Hello. They're saying hi in their little chats, which I love because in the week. <laughs> Tell me about, um, we talked about your fan fiction. Right. And we talked about your favorite podcasts. So right. are you on any fan pages? Any fan pages that you really the only, love? Well, the only, I mean, the only fan pages that I'm on, I mean, I'm on the, I'm on the official Hardy's, the main Hardy's page. Okay. Um, and, um. I, I mean, I, I, I comment from time to time. I have to be careful how I comment um, because I've had several comments removed. Oh, okay. And um, for, for as far as I'm concerned, for no reason, but that's not my call. Uh, I'm on the Lucas Bouchard Hardy's page and I'm on the Chris McNally fan page. Okay. What and is that's it? pretty much it. So by being part, because Brian Burr talks about this all the time, by being part of the main, um, the official page, what right. is it that you, um, what is the plus to being on that page versus someone, another page, or isn't there one? Uh, well, I think one of the reasons, the, the, well, the, the main, the main reason to be on that page is that that's how I got the notification that. Uh, we could put our name in for the Hardy's family nice. reunion. Nice. And you, I mean, that's the only place that you would be able to enter that kind of lottery. Um, and I had never gone before. Um, I had thought about putting my name in last, like in 2022. Mm -hmm. um, but there was no guarantee that the cast was going to be there. In fact, they had even said at the time, yeah, it's highly unlikely that the cast will be there. So I said, you know, should I spend, you know, $2,500 to, you know, fly, get a hotel for four days plus a ticket if I'm not going to get to see the cast. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think I'll pass. Um, the cast actually did show up and it was a big surprise and they were actually, they showed up on the set. Um, when they went out for the set tour, they were under a tent and all of a sudden all the, the cast came out. Um, and that was the introduction. Lindsay Sturman was there and they introduced her as the new showrunner. Um, um, anyway, so I, I didn't go to that one, but I did put my name in, um, last April it came out like I think it was April of, uh, April of 2023 and they said we're going to have another Hardy's family reunion mm -hmm. and it's going to be in September uh, in Vancouver and put your name in and I put my name in and I put a, my friend's name in and it, it it if you put like you can you can add uh, one person so okay. like if you, if you put yourself in one other person, if you get picked, the other person gets picked automatically. Oh, so that you know, unfortunately, my friend couldn't go, um, so I ended up having to go by myself, which that's okay. I mean, I I I, I was very sad that she couldn't go. She knows, you know, Julie. You know, she. I know who Julie is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, she couldn't go. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm not going to get into that. Um, so I I went. And I flew out to Vancouver. I went out on Thursday. The, the event starts on Friday. It goes Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I, I flew out on Thursday. I got there midday, around midday. And I went in and um, you, I went up. I, I checked into my room. And I went, up, I went upstairs, got, got my room, came back downstairs. I went into the... Uh, into the coffee shop and there was Martha and Holly uh, Peterson and a couple of other people. And then uh, Gabriella from Finland. And we all, we all, we were sitting together in the, in the restaurant. Um, I met, um, I met uh, Lori Garcia who, who, who she's from here in New York. She lives on Long Island and oh, she has cool. her, uh, her little boy, Zach, 
Little Hardy. Um, he was there. So I met Little Zach. Um, I, met, I met Caroline, who is a huge Nathan fan. Uh, we hit it off immediately. I'm a huge Lucas fan. And we had, a, we had a lovely time. We went to the Mountie store together. We got on the train. We rode the train down to the waterfront. We went to the Mountie store. We had a, we had a great time. Nice. You know, she and I, she and I can disagree about storyline, but be, but without being disagreeable. Yeah. And, and, and that's fine. And, 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 you know, but like, that's kind of okay. Right. I mean, you know, you don't have, I mean, I, what, what I, what I don't like is when, when certain people that I see on social media, not, not, not Carolyn, certain people I see on social media, if I say this was the biggest mistake ever in creation, right. I don't usually say that, but I, I just, know. I'll just, yeah. right. But I'm just, I'm being, I'm being overly dramatic. Yeah. And I'll say, I don't agree with this because, and then I'll have someone jump on a th- on my thread. I didn't tag, I didn't tag it. Uh, Hardy's. I, you know, I tagged Lucas Bouchard or whatever, but somehow they insert themselves into my thread and they try to educate me on why I am wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm sitting there on social media going, okay, <laughs> whatever, you know, um, you know, don't, you know, don't, I don't insult you. Yeah. Like we can, we can disagree without being disagreeable. Right. Uh, but I met so many nice people. I, like I said, I met Marie Franz from Quebec. She's just the, the, the loveliest person. I met Pia. Pia is a huge Nathan fan. I met Reggie Ma. I met, um, oh my God, I met so many wonderful people. I, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. It was, a, it was a, like, to me, it was, it's a once in a lifetime experience. You know, will I, will I, would I go back again? I'm not sure. First of all, it was very expensive. I mean, for me, I mean, if you live on the West Coast, let's say if you live in Washington State, you can drive. But I had to, you know, I had to fly. From, from New York. So um, my airfare was close to $1,000. It was like 900 and change. But then again, I, I upgraded so I can get bigger leg room. So it was an extra 200 bucks or something. Um, but the whole trip probably set me back about $2,500. And that's not, then that's not including you know, drinks at the bar or souvenirs or, or anything like that. I'm just talking about airfare, hotel, and the ticket to the event. That's like 2,500 bucks, those three things. Because um, I stayed in the hotel an extra night. Some people left Sunday night. But I was like, if I left Sunday, when they came back from the set tour, some people got their bags and went right to the airport. And I was like, no, I'm staying one more night. I want to get a good night's sleep, and I'm leaving Monday morning. So that was like an extra 250 bucks for the hotel to, you know, get a few hours sleep, but it was worth it because I, you know, I came down the next morning and I walked in to get some breakfast and I, and I came upon a table (coughs) of people and it was every Hardy admin (coughs) was at the table along with uh, Patty Bird. I don't think Brian was at the table. I don't think he was but I think Patty Bird was, and all of the Hardy admins. And I had met several of them up close and personal. And um, for, for the most part, I, I you know, I, I like them. They're, you know, they're, they're nice people. They, they, they work very hard to put this thing on. They don't get paid. You know, they have their biases character-wise. And to me, I think their bias is toward a certain Mountie. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I cannot um, get over the fact that these women work extremely hard. You know, like they, they, they have to put this thing together. They have to get a venue. And then they had to change the venue <coughs> because the, um, the original location for the Hardy's family reunion this past year was supposed to be the Sheraton. And we got a no- notification in... I think it, I can't remember if it was June or July. And they said, um, we are going to have to find another venue because the the workers at the Sheraton are on strike and we don't know how long it's going to be. So, <coughs> excuse me, we're mm-hmm. going to have to find a new venue. And they had to go out and find a whole nother hotel 
with that had a big enough ballroom to hold, I don't know how many people were there. I would say maybe 350, 400 people. I mean, it's a big, it's a pretty big ballroom. It's an interesting thing you bring up the strike. So I thought it ironic that, and I know this for a fact because, and people have heard me say this because I received notification from Hallmark people, like from, and also from agents right. saying that um, there was uh, out of, re even though they were filming, right. Um, and had certain passes to film, like when calls the heart and the way home that out of respect for the strike, there would be no promotions, nothing. Well, <laughs> And, and when calls the, that's a promotion, what they did, they promoted and they should not have, I don't care that they came and said, Oh, don't take pictures. Don't do that. You're still promoting. So I thought how ironic that you're above what the rules are saying. Uh, it it yeah. surprised me. It also surprised me that I'm sorry, they were allowed to give certain interviews and they posted them. And I was like, no one's allowed to give an interview. I even said to one of the agents, I asked a question about someone and they're like, no one's allowed to give an interview. So I linked, I said, I'm sorry, I didn't realize this. And I linked all that were being given through the heart to hearties. And he goes, well, I guess some people are above rules. <laughs> oh, wants to me. So they did, yes, they go ahead. Did, did tell us when we were when we were there in the room on mm -hmm. it was on Saturday while well, the cast panels and there were th like three separate panels uh two um I mean the first panel was you know like Erin and Jack and Chris and Kevin and yes. Pascal and mm -hmm. um I forget who else uh Andrea and uh I think because Kevin was there Kayla was with him mm -hmm. um and then there was a second panel Ben was there Ben was there, and um, I think Kevin wasn't there because Kevin had COVID. Yeah, yes. I think Kevin had COVID. Um, Canfield, you know, like um, like the, the Canfields were there. Uh, Joanna Newmarch was there. Loretta yep. Walsh was there. Um, Amanda Wong was there. You know, and and Ben Rosenbaum was there. Um, and it, and then after that, they had the kids. The kids come out. Um, and it was um, it was very nice. And they told us under no circumstances are we to take any pictures. And they were walking around looking if like someone, mm -hmm. you know, if someone like picked up a cell phone, like click, click, you know, they would they would probably grab your phone and throw it on the floor and stomp on it. However, <laughs> when the I don't know, but when the first panel finished, Chris was on, and there was a young girl there. She had created, I don't want to mention her name. I don't want to embarrass her. She had created these two dolls mm -hmm. that were supposed to be Minnie Lucas and Minnie Elizabeth. They were positively adorable. And she was sitting up front. And I think Brian Bird may have seen her. I'm not sure how. I don't know how she ended up in the forefront. I, I don't, I, I have no way of knowing. But all of a sudden you hear Erin go, are those dolls? You know, like that. And she goes, come here, you know. And uh, so this, this, this young woman, she brings up these dolls and she gives the mini Elizabeth doll to Aaron and she gives the mini Lucas doll to Chris. Chris then holds the doll and doesn't want to give it back. He was beside himself. He was like, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. And, um, I mean, and it was, he clearly was a Lucas and Elizabeth fan. And these people knew that in, you know, that the, the following day was episode nine, which was the, which was the hostage thing and Elizabeth going, I can't do this anymore. And then there were two more episodes, episode 11. So they knew these people are sitting there on that panel and they knew that in three weeks, this poor young girl and half the, probably half the people in the ballroom we're going to have their hearts broken. Mm -hmm. And they were all hearts and flowers over these, uh, over these two dolls. And I understand they can't give away storyline. I get it. But then don't, like, they feed they into had, it. They yeah. had, they fed into it. And they, they, uh, they pictures with this girl. And Hallmark came and took pictures with this, with this young girl. And they were photos. Uh, excuse me, I have to give That's my right. cat a treat. Otherwise, she won't shut up. 
Okay, That's here okay. you go. She gets very loud because, um, you know, first of all, she she's 15, she's almost 15 years old, but she's also deaf. So when she meows, she meows very, very loudly because I guess she can't heal herself. So she figures the louder, the better. Um, um, so Lillian, and, hold, hold your thought yeah. because there's things running here. I saw yeah. what the people said. I watched it. It's out there. Hallmark filmed it and you could see it in real time. Hallmark, that was the other thing that blew my mind. Hallmark was there filming it and I saw right. things in real time. So right. it's out there. People can see it if they want. It's been out there. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they were, but but Chris and Erin were very, very sweet to this to this girl. Her name is Lauren. I won't mm -hmm. mention. I don't, I, I won't say her, her tag or her last name. Um, and they actually signed the dolls for her. So she has two dolls and they're signed, they're autographed and so forth. She created another Lucas doll wearing the shirt he wore to the HFR. Oh. With a mini version. And she so wants to get it to Chris. And I don't know if she ever found out how to get a hold of I feel like she mentioned something to me. I know how to. I know exactly oh, how to okay. get hold of him. All right. If I'm, I know who you're talking about. I'll have to look. Right. I think she reached out. I don't know if she reached out again. I don't know if I ever told her, but I absolutely know how to have, get it to him. Right, because I know she would love for him to have that. Yep, I can tell um, you. Exactly she, she, she even had a, um, a, a whole big thing for his birthday on Twitter where she had him like at a mini desk with a mini nameplate with it with I, everything was mi, mi, she, she is meticulous she's brilliantly meticulous she truly is um but after that panel and the first panel the Aaron the Chris the Kevin the the Bill you know the Jack Wagner when those the first leads when they left the ballroom and they were walking out now they were like over there somewhere and mm -hmm. I was sitting on this side but there were there were like four sets of doors so I got up and I ran out into the lobby and, and here's Chris and he comes out, he's mobbed. No one else was mobbed. Nally was mobbed. Kevin wasn't mobbed. Chris was mobbed. People were all over this man and they were taking selfies with him. He didn't know what to do. I don't think he knew what to do. The, the, the hardy admins were beside themselves. They were trying to like, you know, blah, 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 you know, the, they were they were pressing the elevator button because um, the, the elevator the elevator outside of the ballroom believe it or not that was the same elevator I would take up and down to my my hotel room mm -hmm. it was on the same that uh, when I got off the elevator I noticed there were a couple of rooms to the side one said you know cast one that, then one said you know whatever uh, admins or whatever so clearly that's where they were setting up just gone upstairs and waited for them i could have seen him come off the elevator and go hi <laughs> you know and i uh, like thrown myself at him or something <laughs> um I, and I just you know um okay chris if you hear this lillian really is harmless she's harmless i'm harmless Thank i'm old you. enough to be your mother um but he was he was so gracious he was taking pictures with these people Erin was off to the side. She was, she had her face turned. She did not want her picture taken. Okay. And then the elevator door finally opened and the, the admins like pushed him onto the elevator. He was like, he pushed. and then Erin did like a, like a, like a leap, like a, like a gazelle and leapt onto the elevator and hid behind Chris. And, uh, and then a, a, and some other people got on the elevator. And then we have that famous picture that came out of, I don't know, a while ago of the elevator selfie. That was all of them on the elevator. But Chris, I think Chris got on. <laughs> so well, off they went. And I never, I never pulled my camera out to take a picture. That's they told me not to take, they told me not to take a picture. I was so tempted. But I was, I was good. I didn't take You're a picture. Good girl. And, now, and now I feel like, should have taken a picture. No, you know, like, screw, screw them. You know, it's like you're you know. going to have an opportunity. I promise you. Yeah, one of these days, maybe you will. I know. Um, but I got to tell you, I think the. I mean, it was nice seeing them, but I mean, I'm seeing them from like here to a block and a half away because it's a huge ballroom, so I'm not on top of them. 
I wasn't in the front. I wasn't in the front of the room. I was on the side. So, um, so I would say the highlight of the trip for me was then the next day, which was the visit to the set. Oh, nice. And I have to tell you that was worth the price of admission. Cool. You know, you get off that bus and, um, and then you start walking and you walk past the blacksmith and you see the horses in the corral and you go, Hey Newton. <laughs> um, and you start walking and all of a sudden you're on main street and here's the queen of hearts and there's the mercantile and there's the, you know, the Valley voice and there's, you know, I mean, and, and I'm sitting there going, this is what I've always wanted to see, Aww. you know, and I like the cars, like uh, Lucas's car was parked, uh, Lee's car was parked. Nate Pelletier, he was there and he was helping people in and out of Lucas's car, which uh, one of the pictures I sent you yes. was me it's sitting in Lucas's thumbnail. car. Yep, it's yeah, thumbnail. right. I mean, I, 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 I sent you like four pictures, the one with the water tower, the one me sitting in yeah. the, in the uh, mm -hmm. I said, I, I, I had uh, I sat in Lucas's car. I sat in Bill's booth. I laid on Elizabeth's couch. And I, I saw that. Selfie. I did a selfie of myself but with the water tower. And that's the one that's on your YouTube thing. Um, the, um, he, he helps you in the car. So now I'm five foot six. Okay. I'm not a, like a shrimp, but I'm certainly not six feet tall. Mm -hmm. Now I know, I know Chris is six two. So that would make him, if I'm five, six, that would make him eight inches taller than me. I had a problem getting in that car. And then on the side, on the, on the driver's side door, there's a little button. It looks like a doorbell, like a ding dong. Yeah. Just a little white, a light, white button. Yes. So I look at, at Nate Pelletier and I said, what is that? And I first, first I said, how does Chris get in this car? He said, they're very gingerly. And then I said, what is that? He goes, oh, that's the horn. Yeah, to dislocate, yeah. And he, and he says, we had to disconnect the horn. Like, yeah. Because Chris's knee kept hitting it and yes. setting it off. Yes. And I, and I was like, are you serious? And I'm going, I'm sitting in the same seat that Chris McNally sat in. I will never watch these pants again. <laughs> I was just like, you know, <laughs> Wait, I'm, well, kidding. Then, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know. I'm hold kidding. on. Um, I had Nate as a guest. Years, uh, years ago, a couple years back, he was an amazing guest. And he told us all about the cars. He even gave us a little hint to um, how they were, how they had to film something. And he got to play sometimes a part and he's played more parts since then. So it's a great interview. If anybody wants to see it, it's, it's on there. It's like about two years ago and you'd have to go look it up on my, when calls the heart yeah. playlist. Right. He was so gracious. He even took my phone. He took my phone and he went around the front. Like, cause I have a picture of me in the side. He went through the front and he took like a picture of me, like through the windshield. And, um, and I said, yeah, that's very nice of you. Thank you so much. You know? And, um, you know, and then, you know, obviously we, we got to walk all over. The only place we weren't allowed to go in was, um, the judge's office. There was a, there was a note on the door saying, you know, uh, off limits or please do not enter or whatever. And um, I kind of had a feeling that, uh, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. We didn't know it at the time because we had just seen, season, we had just seen yeah. episode nine. So we didn't know that Lucas was going to be governor. But, you know, in hindsight, I would imagine that they're using uh, the judge's office to be the governor's office. They're using, I mean, that's, of, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. Um, you know, they had a real, uh, a, you know, a, a, a real life Mountie. They had, they had other uh, Mounties that weren't in red surge, but they were there for security, but there was one that was actually dressed in the red surge. And he was so nice. He, what a nice man. Um, he would stop and take pictures with everybody. I saw some of them. That was cute. Everybody. He was the nicest man. And then he was off by the jail. And when I, I went into the jail and I, and I wanted to take a picture of me in the, in the, in the cell, right. I mean, you know, it's, you know, you know, you have, if you're going to go to the to cell, you have to have a picture of yourself in the jail going, eh, you know, like that. 
And so he was nice enough. And then there was outside of the jail, there was a, um, uh, like a, um, you know, like a barrel. Yeah. Uh, and they were asking for donations. There had been a, a tragic, um, a Mountie lost his life in the line of duty. Like in the current day now, yeah. you know. Yeah. And they were taking, and he was young and had a, you know, wife and child or whatever. Oh. It's similar to like, look at the, the guy in the, the, the police officer. Yeah. In, in New York here. Um, you know, so uh, similar. So they had a, a barrel there asking for donations. I mean, I didn't have any Canadian money. And I said to the to the Mountie, I said, would you take U.S. dollars? I mean, I, and he said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, I just went in my wallet and I pulled out a, like, you know, a bunch of 20s and I just threw it in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I said, that's a good cause. Uh, and he just, he was delightful. What a sweet man. Um, I actually did meet Brian Bird. Um, it was an Nikki, accident. It was an accident. Nikki Longnecker and I were over by the library where they had a tray. Uh, they had a table that had uh, donuts. And then they had, a, you know, the, these the, the hot chocolate, you know, where you could get mm -hmm. hot chocolate. So Brian came over and Nikki and I are there. Nikki says to him, don't you do anything to our Luca Beth? And Brian goes, well, you know, <laughs> he says, you know, sometimes, sometimes you get what you want and not what you need. Oh, oh it's always, sometimes you get what you, what you need and not what you want. You and then he said, I'm oh, and, I know. And then he, right. I know. And then he said, um, and then he said, you know, the show is, is about more than two trees and it's, a, and, and it's, uh, um, um, the forest about, about the forest. And then, and then we got the season 11 poster with the two trees on it, you mm -hmm. know, so it was just like, really, Brian? Oh, oh my God. Oh, anyway, anyway, you know, what are you going to say? But when I, when um, I did, listen, this, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. And I may have said this last time, but this is, this is, do not tell me that I did not see what I saw. Do not tell me that I did not see what I saw because I will, and I'm not the only one will show you not one piece of evidence, but I can show you without a shadow of a doubt, a hundred pieces of evidence because I we've gone through it. Absolutely. And don't say to me, you might not get what it might not be what you want, but it's what you need. It's what Am you I need. in a cult and you're the cult leader telling me that I that's what people say in cults. Like, do not, do not say that to me. Stop that cult behavior. I don't even want to hear about it. Before we go any further, I wanted to share, this was a while back, and then there's some things from what you were sharing in the comments. Grammy Rose was saying, it's crazy, but I think of the division of Nathan and Lucas fans, like the division between the political parties. Now, to me, you are spot on, and that's with anything in social media, not necessarily yeah. about this. People mm -hmm. have been... And they feel like they've been given the right to, and it's people, it's not, oh, well, that's my opinion. There are opinions right. and then there are facts right. and people are misled. Like they don't pay attention to what a fact is. They look at a, a, a social media label and right away, everybody, it starts rolling around and everybody starts believing it. And um, it, it, that's become a disaster. So it is. Yeah, that's why people behave the way they do. And they're not nice. They're really not nice. Oh, no, they're not. I, I mean, like I said, I don't care if someone doesn't agree with me. Yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, life, you know, that's life, right? I mean, you know, if, if everyone agreed with me 100% of the time, my God, how boring would that be? What right. I don't, what I don't appreciate and what I will push back against is when you not only don't agree with me, but you try to tell me why I'm wrong. Yep. And, and that I take offense to. Right. right. I, I don't, I, you know, like I don't go on there, there, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of my friends on Twitter say, Oh, you have you seen blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I say, no, I'm blocked by that person because what happened was, and I've been blocked by a large number of very mean people since the end of season eight um they, they they blocked me immediately and i never interacted with half of them it's just that i interacted with one or two and they all told their friends to block me yeah yeah so i never see their vitriol 
Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, but then someone else will say, oh, you know, you know, it was, it was obvious, you know, there was a foreshadowing. I hate when they use that word foreshadowing. I don't think they understand the actual definition of the word. They don't. I truly, I don't, I don't no. think they really under, understand the definition of the word foreshadowing. They don't it's understand like, the definition It's like of someone, someone used the term last week. Um, I don't, I don't see a, maybe there'll be a marriage of convenience between Elizabeth and Nathan. And I said, and that I actually did respond to. And I said, um, I don't ever see that happening. By definition, a marriage of convenience is devoid of either love or commitment and is usually done for personal gain. Yes. They don't understand the definition of the terms that they're using. Yep. But they're very passionate about it. Mm -hmm. They're extremely passionate about it. And I, you know, it's fine. And then the person responded, well, maybe it was a poor choice of words. I was like, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, but I still feel blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I, it's, it, I'm, I'm very happy for the Nathan fans who will be, it would seem to be that they're getting what they wanted. Um, but I'm very sad for those of us who had supported the show because a lot of these people have only decided to come back to yes. watch the show after two years. Yes. Um, but those of us who have supported the show since the end of season eight, since we defended Erin from the people who were burning her picture and posting it on social media, the people who were sending death threats to Chris, the people who were basically threatening Erin, who hated Erin. Now they love Erin. I had people like that on my on my podcast in the very beginning. And I was like, uh, you know, like, and then they went off to do their own thing. And I was like, do you forget what you said publicly? I, right. I didn't say right. it. you said it. Yeah. Right, right. Um, so yeah, I mean, and I'm happy for them, and I hope that they they get what they want. And I will be watching season eleven. I am not one of those people who have said I'm done with the show. Mm -hmm. Um, because I I just I don't see they're like, oh, I'm not going to give them ratings. That's not going to happen. I would never watch that show and give them ratings. And like you said, unless you're a Nielsen family, it really doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter if I watch or not. Right. Um, so I choose to watch because I would like to see the story. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not tremendously interested in the love life of Elizabeth Thornton, uh, quite frankly, because I am not too fond of her character right now and maybe that will change during season 11 and i will come to say well okay fine you know mm -hmm. um during chris's interview he said that he has a conversation with both elizabeth and nathan and that he kind of gives them his blessing yeah and i'm thinking was, well he was saying and I'm, and I'm thinking like the lucas that we knew oh from the beginning would never do that I know. I think he would because he, well, him, I think he would because it's what she wants for her happiness. He's he was not going to fight for her. That's what she wanted. And if you think about it, he has he has said that to her so many times and she kept choosing, choosing. That's how the storyline went. And I know. But so, yeah, right. He kept letting her go when she kept coming back. Mm -hmm. I mean, he went to her house and he said, I want you to find your true love. This was at the end of season, like the yeah. in episode eleven of season eight. Yeah. And in order, I want you to try to uh, find your true love. And in order to do that, I want, I need to set you free. And then he turns around and he walks away and he sets her free. And then she runs out onto the porch and you see the look on her face and it's shock. And then it's then to me the expression on her face changed from one of shock to one of determination. Yeah. And and that was then she, the next day she goes to Nathan and she says, I do love you. It would be impossible not to, but I'm not in love with you. Right. And then when she realizes well, or she thinks that Lucas has left town, she runs after him like mm -hmm. she's going to catch him. But that's yeah. how frantic she was. So um, I just don't see how you throw that away and say that she was simply following her heart. Right. And that he was the safe choice. So it doesn't make sense to me and it never will.
And I want to speak to that. But before we do, I wanted to show some of the things when you were talking about when you were in, um, when you were in, uh, in at the set, um, it says, look, Nikki was saying the main street is much smaller in person. The oh, yeah. make it look like it's wider. So that was really cool that you were able to see it. And this is true. I've heard of this, Carrie. There's something about being on the set that is magical. I've heard it, so it is so. Yeah. And yeah, Cindy, I loved me. I love meeting Ka Carrie. She's she's a such a sweetheart. Ka and Cindy, I've seen pictures of this. The seats in Lucas's car were so comfy. Nate told me some cast would sit in it during break. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Nikki's saying, ironically, she got to sit next to Brian Bird in Vancouver Airport. Yep, I remember when she told. Oh wow! School. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It says, when you put two teams on the field to play, it is obvious that public will support one team or the other. That's how it works. So BB's end, uh, oh, don't put the responsibility for your choices on us. Oh, yes. Right, <laughs> right. Because I think he said we created the teams. No. Brian, Brian, right. Brian Bird said that we created the teams, and that's an absolute falsehood. That's true. Um, yeah. Now, before we talk about... Um, what you were you were saying earlier i have a question for everyone and and you first of all um okay. brian bird said we don't talk about end game and i'm paraphrasing him here but he said it enough because right. that's the end of the story and they want the Correct. story to go on right right said, right right i know i know but it's so funny because we've had three interviews with deidre and in those three interviews, twice, two different interviews, they use the word end game. Oh, is, is, are they, are you, and is Nathan and Elizabeth end game? And they, um, both of them in their interviews say yes and, and speak freely of it. And I'm right. thinking, why now are we throwing around end game when you said you didn't want end game? Cause that'd be the end of the show. I find that ironic. What do you it think? It is ironic. That? Oh, I, think? I agree. I think it's, I think it's, it's, you know, it's like people talking out of both sides of their mouth. Thank you. You know, I mean, um, we would, we would, after season eight, Brian Bird said, we picked Lucas for Elizabeth because we'd already done the Mountie story and we wanted to go in a different direction. Yeah. And we felt that putting Elizabeth and Lucas together would ensure the longevity of the show. Yeah. Those are the words he used. Yeah, that was after season eight. After season 10, he went on an interview and said it was a creative decision to change to to break them up to ensure the longevity of the show. <laughs> yes. I know. Um, and then when someone said to him, but didn't you say the same thing after yes. season eight? He said, yes, I did. But at least we got two good years out of Lucas and Elizabeth. Yes, I know that. That statement made me so angry. How could you be so? That's condescending. That's well, kind of saying. I oh, mean, that's kind of saying oh, we got you know. But it, but it, it, but it, it. To me, all it says is that Brian Bird is a businessman and cares about his show, but doesn't really care about the fans on either side, really. I could be totally wrong, and if Brian Bird is listening in on this, I'm sure Brian would probably. He won't call me. I'm sure he won't. He doesn't have my, he doesn't have my number. I don't think Brian will be calling me, but, but, but you, but you know what I mean? We got three different reasons for the change in season 10, right? More we got, that. we got a creative decision that to, to ensure the longevity of the show. Then we got, then he threw Lindsay under the bus and he said, Lindsay had an idea halfway through season 10 so that the first part of season 10, uh, there was going to be a wedding. We were, we were preparing for yeah. this wedding because I believe the beginning of season 10 was written by John Tinker. It was. I, th I think the, the first few episodes of season 10 were based on John Tinker's scripts because he said, like when he was talking to the Hardy admins, he said he had already been working on season 10 and had oh, yeah. it half written. He had it half written already. Yep. He talked about it. I don't, I don't know why John left. I don't know if he left on his own or, or if he was let go. I don't know if it was a, uh, um, whatever the decision was. I know that he did say that he is working on another project that is based on another book by Jeanette Oak. And I don't, I don't know if the, you know, if, if it's been put on hold, pandemic, 
SAG strike, whatever. But um, the, the the SAG strike might have might have affected it. Um, Let me speak to that too before we go any further. Yeah. Um, so the when there is about a book, this is interesting. Um, Aaron said something about it was always meant to be. Uh, no, 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 no. That that's changed. She didn't always say that. That's new. A new narrative. No. That's um, a new. That's a new one. Yeah, that's a new narrative. Back to um the thing where people say, "Oh, she's back to her roots." It's back to oh. the, way the books were Mountie and a teacher. And I'm like, the book, <laughs> you guess you didn't read them because I read them and that's not what the books are about. And right. if you want to look at the Mountie and the teacher in those books, um, she didn't get to live in one place. And when they got right. married, they had to, they had to move. And it, and they kept moving and it was a hardship for her and her, and her relationship with her husband. Right. So, Right. Go we'll talk like this is what I mean. This is when people they don't really read a news article; they just see a, a news flash, or someone says on on TV, "Oh, such and such," and then now it's gospel. They don't bother to fact check. This is with that, that drives me crazy. All right. So now, season eleven, the end game. Thank you for answering that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say b- before we um close out is what is it in season? 11 that you were looking forward to like what storylines well i mean we I, I mean clearly i i'm there for i'm there for governor bouchard i'm there for Lucas. okay okay um after seeing that little tidbit today where elizabeth dashes off to capital city to be by his side <laughs> cough cough um i'm very interested to see now chris said Episode one is difficult for Lucas because in his in, in his interview with Deirdre, he said episode one is kind of hard for Lucas because he is recovering. It he's he's hurt, mm-hmm. um, but but he get but he gets better, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, it's like first he's in a bed, he's got a bandage on his head, he's wearing some very nice royal blue pajamas. I don't know, um, it, it, you know, and he's there in the hospital, and 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 Aaron is there going, Lucas, it's Elizabeth, you know. And if I'm Lucas, I wake up and say, what the hell are you doing here? You uh-huh. know, I just, you know, and then Nathan comes in with ice cream. I just want it to have, you know, I just, anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I want to see Lucas be governor. Um, Chris did say something about that. Now, I'm, I'm curious as to, now I know the scene where Elizabeth is by his bedside. That's in Capital City. It is, but but I'm wondering if they bring him back to Hope Valley to recover some more, and he's and he's, he's at the he's infirmary, there. right? And is at the infirmary because the I did not see this when I was um, I on did. set, I have it. but some people said that there was a get well card for there Lucas is. from the members of the cafe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wonder if um, you know Elizabeth will have you know the school children write him a get well card like they did for Nathan. Um, or do they still hate him for breaking up with her? I know, but it was done so respectfully. I, I, if I hear Deirdre Behar use that word, the respectful breakup at the train station, one more time, I'm I'm going to send uh, send her like coal in her stocking for Christmas. I mean, I, don't get me started on Deirdre Behar. She said it in both both the interview with with, with Chris and with Erin. If I'm Chris, I would have said, "What are you talking about?" What what breakup scene are you talking about? That's respectful, um, you know. Oh, that that scene was so respectful. Um, no, it wasn't. So you're so. looking forward to seeing what's going on with Lucas with that. I really want to see what what he's going to do as governor. It's not so much I just want to see his his recovery. Of, or of course, I want to see his recovery. Um, I you know I'm I'm interested to see Lee and Rosemary as they navigate parenthood. With with evidently a year and a half old toddler, they do only, advance. It does. They advance. do advance. It it. But but you know, we all know that time is relative in Hope Valley. Um, it's you know, I mean, it's sort of like when Elizabeth gave birth to little Jack, right? It was either the shortest pregnancy on record or the longest. I mean, it was either two months or fourteen months. <laughs> um, I mean, Jack died in in October, and she gave birth on Christmas Eve. Hello. How, I mean, how far along was she when she found out she was pregnant? 
she would have had to been seven months pregnant. Or actually, she was a month early because she said she said she wasn't due until January and he was born on Christmas Eve. So but that would have to be, you know, she was a month. I never get upset by that. She was a month early and they she probably yeah. get pregnant on her honeymoon. You could. Do oh, I'm sure. Oh, of course. Because he then he went away and then she because came went home, away and, and then, then he died. died. Yeah. yeah. So there there's a. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. And but when we do we know when do we know when she got married when did she get married when was their wedding was it I like forgot. after school I, was over i mean was it in the it summertime was, yeah. I mean, it, because it, it couldn't have been in the summertime because that wouldn't have given her nine months to january it had to be nine you know like she would have had to gotten spring uh pregnant in what april to be nine months to january yeah um so yeah i know time is relative but i i would like to see um Mary, um, I, I still, I, I do like them. Um, I'm a little peeved at Rosemary's behavior in season ten, but I can get over it because she was like a new mother. Uh, um, I want to see the continuing story of Henry. I'm interested to see what Henry's reaction is when Lucas is offer, offers him a job. I mean, Lucas does offer him a job. Please, he does. Would you, would you come and join my team? So. I'm curious as to whether Henry says yes or no. Um, I kind of have a feeling he might say no, um, but I don't know. I, I don't know. And um, I guess we'll find out. But I understand also that there's a great deal of interaction between Lee and Lucas in yeah. season 11. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah. you tell my least favorite storyline, I mean, would be the you know, potential romance between Nathan and Elizabeth. It's the, it's the thing that I am least looking forward to. I'll watch it. I mean, I'll watch yeah. it. I'll be like this. I'm going to watch it. Now, I, watch I it. have a question. Well, not a question. I'm excited about Rosemary and Bill trying to investigate together. Oh, yes. the them oh my together. God. Oh, my God. That could be hilarious. I know. Absolutely I know. hilarious. I mean, Rosemary will say blah, 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 and Bill will do his, an eye roll. Uh, cool. You know, and then Rosemary will go, oh, no, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Um, you know, it's sort of like, I mean, Chris said that uh, Lucas doesn't remember who shot him. I wonder if, when, when Chris said in his interview with the Hardys back in December, he said that that final scene actually was filmed. It was. But they edited it. So clearly. He didn't know that. He didn't know he, until it aired. He, right. He didn't realize it until after the fact. So I'm curious as to when he says, what are you doing here? Whether or not the camera had flipped around to see who it was that was on the other side of the headlights. He said who then did. shot him. Yeah. They, he said that we knew. He said you knew who shot him. You knew right. who he was. Said, right. But he says he. Like he says in season 11, Lucas doesn't remember. Right. But, will, but will we, the audience, get to see? Probably not. No, right? because there's a whole mystery behind that now. They won't, yeah. yeah, they won't tell us, right? Um, um, Nikki, Nikki said, I would also like to know why he had to sell the saloon. Um, what, the only reason for a conflict of interest would be if prohibition happens. And that might be, but I don't know about that. It, I, he says it's a conflict of interest. So that, that could be whatever. Yeah. That bothers me because Chris said that was Lucas's last vestige um, of, you know, a tie to, yeah. to Hope Valley. Yes. And I, you know, I don't want to feel this way, but I almost feel as if in some ways they are trying to, push the character of Lucas off the show at some point. It may not be this season, um, but I just, you know, like, why would they take everything away from him? And who bought the, the saloon? Who bought it? Who has that kind of money? Lucas bought that, Lucas bought that saloon in, um, uh, what? Do you know, my cat is telling me who bought the saloon. Who bought the saloon, Abby? Okay. Her name is Abigail, by the way. Um, he bought the saloon in season six for $10,000, right? It's now season 11. That's five years. That saloon has to be worth a good deal more than $10,000. I don't believe Mike Hickam has $10,000 or 12,000 or 13,000. 
So I'm thinking, who the heck did Henry buy? But Henry gave the money, his money, he gave it to Joseph for the church. So I don't know if Henry has, yeah, well, I don't know if Henry has the money. Then I thought, wouldn't it be great if Jeanette bought the saloon? Like she comes on to the scene and she buys the saloon. I love that we get to meet Jeanette. That is something that I I am so looking forward to. I want, well, I would love Jeanette to be Julie Gonzalo, but I don't believe, I don't believe Julie wants to get involved with serial, serialized TV. I think she's very happy um, doing her Hallmark movies there, you know, three weeks and then she can go home to her baby. Um, I, I, I could be wrong. But um, if, if it's not her, then I want it to be some knockout, gorgeous, drop-dead gorgeous woman to step off that stagecoach and then have Elizabeth, like, you know, drop her basket in the street, you know. Um, There's supposed to be a bit of a problem because when we get to meet Jeanette, as Chris said, there is something that he, about her that he didn't de- disclose to, to um, Elizabeth. And of course, yeah, everybody and- way or getting all upset about that. But I'm like, it could be anything. And and it causes a problem, he says. And it also, the interactions because of that and something else between Elizabeth and Lucas is what keeps Nathan a little bit back. That's why he eventually says, no, there's nothing here. You yeah. have my blessing, go. You know, so yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah. I know. And we can get I say? Jeanette, I think, in episode four. I think episode that's- four. So right. if we if we remember correctly, um, well, I can't even say that because it, it's it's part two. So I don't even look at it like that. Um, as we're wrapping up, I wanted uh-huh. to say a couple of things. One, for those of you that are Lucas Bouchard, and I may have said this already, but for those of you that are Lucas Bouchard um fans. I am on Sunday nights as soon as the episode is finished airing. Um, I will pop on and I'll be doing a live podcast and talking about Governor Bouchard and, you know, just Governor Bouchard, just what's going on with him and the storyline. And then um, on Monday nights, I will still be recapping, but I'm recapping it differently. I'm recapping it as part two. So when I look at this, I'm looking at Elizabeth. I just met her and she was engaged. She's a widow who was visiting her husband, some a graveyard crying over him because she was still so in love with him and so scarred and still has trauma, but behind it yet she was well into over a year of an engagement with another man planning a wedding. And while all that was going on, she was lusting after another man, having him in the <laughs> house. She was having intimate was. conversations with him. And so for me as a viewer, if I'm coming in on season 10 and I'm looking at this part two, I'm like, what, 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 what? What kind of a woman is that? And then I she know makes it off. I'm going with you. Then I'm not going with you. And she no, no. And right. So I'm, I'm looking at it that way. So I, she's, she's my least, my least favorite character. And, and yeah. I'm like, mm, don't know if I care for you. Um, I don't like, I'm like, I'm looking, I'm rooting for certain people because of what I saw happening. I'm rooting for Henry. I'm rooting for, um, I'm rooting for, um, Hickam and um, May, May. But I want to see. I would like for the writers to not insult our intelligence because there's no man. And I love Ben. He, he, right. I love they've expanded upon his, his, right. his thing, and I love him. He's great. I loved him with Chris. They have great chemistry. Oh, they had wonderful chemistry. To make him hide with his flowers. No grown man of that. I know. Age. They what hate grown man? Way. What grown man sits behind a ball? They don't. The and I, I know he's shy and he's cute. And I have a theory, and I'm going to say it on here. What if Ben's sisters come to visit and they all pull their money and they give him the money for the saloon? We don't yeah. really know that much about his background. Right. We know he comes from a lot of sisters, so they could. They, I mean, they could get. I don't know, but I, I'm looking forward to exploring that whole relationship if that's where they want to go with the two of them. I think that's cute and I can't wait. Oh, yeah. And but now will people be like, you know, getting on Hickam for owning this den of iniquity? I mean, this, this, 
this saloon, this they place changed that, it and made it very family friendly. It's remember it's well, a it hotel was, now. So, but it wasn't family friendly when Lucas owned it. It's a yeah. hotel now. We're past I know, that, I know. okay. The den of iniquity <laughs> is over. The saloon owner is <laughs> over. You know, we're we're moving oh. on. No, you know what? Yeah, I, I know, I know. In season part two. I didn't see that. I saw a hotel, a family resort, family Absolutely. Street. I love that. And it didn't even I, look like a saloon when you walked in. No, there. no, not anymore. It had boots. It had a it had a check in desk. You know, yep. when you walk in, when yep. you walk in there, ding, ding, ding. like for real, like when I walked yep. in there for real myself, you know, you had the dartboard over there, you had the radio. Then over here, you had they had they had it roped off. They didn't want you to go all the way in, um, but you had the 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 check in desk and then the staircase going upstairs. And then off on the side, they had the booths. And um, and then um, they had a, a few, you know, chairs. Um, it was really nice. You know, yeah. it, was, um, it was very, very well done. I, it, we had the set decorator on. She was talking about all kinds of stuff. She was oh, amazing. Oh, yeah. It was terrific. Um, S-K-A-O, are you jumping from season six to 11? No, because I... Season one, it's not season one, it's part one, is from season one to season nine. And it ends with an engagement and the the birth of, you know, of the possibility of, well, not the possibility, but us knowing that, you know, the cultures are going to have a baby. It's all kind of like wrapped up. I love it. It was. Yes. Yeah. Now, at season 10 on is part two. So I'm looking at Elizabeth from season 10 and i described how she was exactly in season 10 that's how i'm looking and all the characters i'm looking ahead that way and right. i and i'm and i'm excited to see what happens with may and um hickam i would have never thought to put the two of them together but i'm i think it's cute and um you and um what was the other thing oh i can't see what's going on with if we do get any kiddo scenes i know that the, I forget which one it was. I think it may have been Lindsay in her interview. She said, we really don't see much of, of, of Elizabeth in with the kids. I know we saw some scenes, but in previews, but we don't see much. She said she wasn't going to be in the schoolhouse that much. There was a lot of it going to be during the summer or whatever. So I don't know. I I'm just curious to see how Well, that's on, that's, that's unfortunate because yeah. I think Elizabeth does her best work in the classroom. Yes, with the kids. If, if if the entire part of season eleven with Elizabeth is going to be her trying to navigate a potential relationship with Nathan, it's going to be a very long season. We've already. I, been I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I, I we, don't get it. We, we've already been through a long season. Ten was long for me. It kept drawing out her trying to find herself, find herself, find herself, find herself. And I'm like, well, how are you finding yourself? Because you're in love with one man who's dead. You're engaged to another and you're lusting after another. When are you finding yourself? Right. <laughs> and eventually, I guess she did at the end. So, so yeah. we'll, we'll, well, see you know, I mean, Erin said that Elizabeth had a rebirth and she, she was in a cocoon. She, she emerged from a cocoon. That's what she said when she crashed Karen, Kevin's interview. It's true. And then, you know, Kevin said that he believed that Nathan was created for Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Really? No. Mm -hmm. Even Alfonso Moreno didn't say that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But we're, but, you know, they'll swear that they are. All right. They have to. Oh, she's having technical difficulties. Difficulties. You good? We're getting ready to say our byes anyway. All right. Do you have any last minute things you want to say before we say good night? Um, I think we've covered quite a bit. We have. Yeah, we've been on. Oh my God, we've been on for almost two hours. Yes, we have. You thank know, you. Everyone. Um, thank you, everyone, for. Tuning in. Wow, there's 140 people on here. There are at this moment that here, well, that, that have commented and did whatever. There are probably more. Right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. How, how about that? Well, um, thank you very much for inviting me back. Sure. Um, 
I had a I had a wonderful time. Me too. I, I you know I love this stuff. You know I had Me all my too. notes. I had all my notes. I had all my like. You were wonderful. Very very I informative. I tried to stay informative. You were. And um, you know I mean I you know I'll be watching next Sunday and I. Me will, too. Um. I you know like. I'd be interested to see if any of the cast live tweets. Um, Chris has been totally absent from social media since episode one of season 10 when he inadvertently tweeted. And then I think someone told him, no, no, you can't tweet. There's a strike. And I think, it, no, I think it was episode two of season 10 because that's when Ann Agatha yeah. came. And he yeah. said, what do, you, what do you think of my tie or something like yeah. that? Uh, and that was the last tweet we've seen from him. Erin has been absent from Twitter since June of last year when she popped onto Twitter to respond to someone's tweet. I think it was Tree who said Elizabeth needs a new couch, you know, a bigger couch. She needs a bigger couch. And Erin popped on to say, I just popped on to say I like that couch. Um, that should have told us something, right? <laughs> anyway, um, Kevin very rarely tweets. Uh, Jack Wagner normally tweets a lot, and so does Ben. But uh, ben I guess we'll, does. I guess we'll find out. I mean, I mean yeah. quite frankly, I guess we're going to find out if. Um, oh, okay. I just saw someone say Jack Wagner said that he was going to live tweet. I love Jack Wagner. I love the character of Bill Avery. I'm looking forward to seeing what he and Rosemary get into in season eleven. Um, you know. We'll see. They're telling you, I'm, I've been flashing what everybody was saying. They're yeah. saying lots of fun. Thanks, Lillian. I'm Nikki saying she would love to get to meet up with you again someday. I would too, Nick. Yep. Miriam. You're either, you're, you're either going to have to come to New York or I'm going to have to go to Iowa. Oh, New York is, <laughs> um, not to put down Iowa, but New York's got a lot, you know, and you can come <laughs> visit me too. We're not That's too right. Far. If Nikki and Nikki comes here, we can get in the car and drive down to you. Yes. It's only two and a half hours. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, All right. So thank it, you. It was so much fun. Thank All you, right. everyone. And uh, yes.